Okay, everybody, we're live here on the YouTube uh, behind the scenes with Daniel G. Felix. I've always known him as Daniel Goodacre, and uh, we've known each other for many years, and we've bumped into each other. Yeah. So, uh, Danny, welcome to the um, the YouTube hangs, because that's what it is. It's a uh, it's a uh, nearly midnight here in Sydney, and uh, we're doing a pre recording interview on of your show that you're going to be on the uh, the show on Saturday night, the the Sons of Kings Ooh. live show that we're doing. Yes, exciting right. times. Yeah, and, man. And it's kind of like this: we're live, but we're live recording. But uh, Saturday, we're going to be absolutely live going around the world. It'll be showing in Colombia at 5 a.m. in the morning for those fans in Colombia. La gente en Colombia, si están en sintonía, a las 5 de la mañana en vivo, Danny G. Eh, lo pueden ver bajo la página Salsa Kings. Vamos a dejar todos los links. We're going to leave all the links on the bottom here so you can find it on Saturday. Para que lo puedan encontrar el sábado. Así que, buenas noches, Danny. Bienvenido. Welcome. Speak English. Speak Spanish. We're, we're a bilingual show here. So, Hágale. But obviously, we're trying, to, we're trying to speak English here because we've got a lot of our audiences in English. Even in Europe, we're going to have people in Italy um, crossing in. Tuning in this Saturday, we've got people from Sweden, uh, the UK, and Colombia. A lot of the DJs are joining, and I've explained that to you. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Good to see you, Danny. Thank you. It's great to be here with you, Chris. Mate. And, you know, in your Salud. presence once once again after all these years. Salud. Salud. <laughs> You're going harder. Hang on, hang on. I got my secret card here. That That's a good trick too, man. <laughs> El tecito, el café, but it's not really. You know what I mean? Anyway, um, I wish I had you on the show last week. You would have loved it. You would have loved it. I don't know if you got a chance. Oh, to with the with the samba dancers. Oh anyway. yeah, I saw. I, I checked it out actually. <laughs> I had to check it out. Oh well done. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited right. to have you in the show. I'm really excited because we've worked so hard to to build something, a platform that um, that I think there's not enough room talking about the, the you know live music in Sydney has suffered a lot over the last few years. Uh, I think it was something that was coming, and and now we're stuck in this situation where we're all at home. And one of the advantages that I've had is, is, is I've had a chance to listen to people's music now. And I spent a really good time listening to what you've done. And I was amazed to see the hard work you've put into it. I know how much work goes for us that we are just a covers band. We're a covers band, party band. And I got my side gig as a MC and all that stuff. Well, but- not just, I mean, not, it's not just a covers band. It's a, it's an awesome band. <laughs> you shouldn't put it like that. No, but you know what I mean? I respect, I respect <laughs> the talent. That, okay. I let, love let's right. move, let's move to, um, well, you know, I, I, I totally forgot that you've done a couple of gigs. I know you've done gigs for us, but something popped up yeah. in my Facebook page today. And it was a gig that you did at Darling Harbour. Darling Harbour was celebrating 21 yeah, years. I saw that too. Yeah. Of the the Aqua Aqua Show. Show. yeah, and I went and I went, oh my gosh, how funny is that? How coincidental. So that popped up bring in my feed. that festival. I know, man. I wish they'd bring back that festival. Oh, it, 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 you know, Sydney around about 2000, oh, I don't know, maybe the late 90s all the way to 2009 had a really good festival. Back in the day of the Bacardi Festival, um, we had so much going on in Sydney that, you know, I remember hearing great acts that were coming from New York, Jose Alberto Canario, that get here and say, wow, man, the scene is cool, man. You know, they talk to Puerto Ricans. <laughs> New York, yeah, man, you guys cool, man. This is sick, man. You know, <laughs> and, and, and it was cooking. You had La Campana, we had BJs, we had a bunch of city. The scene was hot. Hot, hot. The scene was hot, man. That that's that festival was actually what got me into into Latin music. Well, so well, look, parents. let's go back. Let's rewind the clock for the fans out there that are watching this. Um, Danny, uh, Danny, uh, you must have some jazz in you. I mean, where did it all start for you? I saw a photo pop up. Let's go right back. You, 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 I was, yeah. was, there was a young kid, blonde hair, headphones, and a, and a, I think I saw a tradesman, a draftsman, T square. <laughs> as a guitar yeah. yes very good very good very tell me good, yeah. tell me about that photo let's start from there man i was ever since i was little i've always loved music you know it's and just everything about it listening to it playing it pretending i mean you know back then pretending i was playing yeah and i th- I, uh, I thought i was one of the beatles you know i pretended to be one of the beatles <laughs> 
Yeah. Love I love my John Legion. Lennon. Oh yes. <laughs> yeah. And and Michael Jackson as well back in, you know. Um always love music. And and it's always been what I've really focused on in my life. You know, the mo the, the thing that I've most loved doing and focused on doing has always been music apart from maybe rugby league between the ages of about eight and 12. No <laughs> way. <laughs> rugby league. No yeah, way. Rugby That's league. a tough sport, man. I, I, I played it just touch and that was enough for me. <laughs> yeah. But I used to love it, but, but music then took over. So and I've you, never looked back from there. You'd be afraid to knock a finger off or two. Well, yeah, that's what happened. Actually, I, I broke a I broke a finger playing oh, wow. playing playing league. Yeah, how old were you then? Uh, uh, Eleven years old or something. Show me which one. <laughs> I think it was it was this this one. So it's recovered well. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me how 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 you so from school did you pick up anything in school? Did you play in a school band or anything like that? Yeah. I always played lots of instruments. I, I played, I started on guitar when I was very little, then moved to piano. Mm -hmm. Then in primary school, played a bit of drums. Like, you know, for, I, I, I made a band called the Jawbreakers when I was about five, six years old at Tempe, um, temp, when I was at Tempe. And um, which school did you go to? Tempe, public. Tempe. Cool. I know yeah. that one. That's the one in front. There's a pool behind it. Yeah. 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 And then I went to Newtown High School of Performing Arts, which, oh, yeah. which was where I really got, got, got passionate about jazz music, especially, you know, um, rock. I mean, I was into rock sort of going into high school mm -hmm. and then I, I got heavily into jazz and and composing music when i was at newtown I, I was i was given the opportunity to really work with other great musicians that were my age and and have fun with with it and um got into jazz got into and that was where i got into latin music as well it was around that age because i um i went to the bacardi festival i was dragged there by my parents so so let's and, go a little bit let's pause right there your parents <laughs> are, are they musicians in any way no, no, not really. No, I mean, my dad played a bit of guitar when I was when I was growing up, and I used to love listening to him play the guitar. Uh -huh. But he he never took it that seriously. It was just something that he'd pull out for fun every now and again. Awesome. So they dragged you to this Bacardi festival. It would have been late nineties. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I, I I got there and I was just blown away. I, I loved it. I loved the whole. Everything about it was a free outdoor festival. It was, was summer. It was, it was summer. It it was there was it was great a great vibe. There was lots of girls. There was there was not much know. there was not much clothing because it was summer. <laughs> I know. <Yeah. laughs> I was, we're all on the same boat, right? It was a beautiful and the band. Oh yes, let's yeah. not forget the band. <laughs> no, no, don't forget the band. And the band it was big, big Latin band. You know, I think it was. Um, one of Gus's bands, uh, Candela or, or it would have been um, Candela, yeah, yeah, or one of the All Star Sydney All Stars or something like that, and they had Francisco and um, Luisito and Peter Fur. No, no, it would have been Peter yeah. Guarino, Peter Guarino back Peter then. Peter Guarino, yeah, yeah, it was, and and they were awesome. I, I remember just being blown away by all all the sections, like the, the brass section. Mm. I was I I just started playing trumpet at that time, and I, I was. I was blown away by the brass section and the rhythm section and, and how they all danced and sung and, and really brought the, the, the spirit, the, the vibe of the flavor, you know, sabor. Yeah. Sabor, sabor. Yeah. So yeah. how old were you then you reckon in, in the Bacardi festival? Uh, I was about 14. I'd say. Oh, you're a baby. You're a baby yeah, back man. then. Cause I was already emceeing the Bacardi festival back then. And yeah, that, that was, you were probably the one, man. 
I was there, man. You know, I, you know, I remember when I got that gig and they, and, and the first time they said to me, Oh, Chris, you know, just do what you do. And I'm saying, Oh yeah. Okay. Mi gente Latina. And I'm, I'm crazy, man. You know, like I don't follow the rules. Yeah. I spanglished it. And, and the real reason I was crossing over between English and Spanish, because when I ran out of things to say in English, I'll continue in Spanish. <laughs> and that's how mm. I, I did my whole MC gig. I've never studied for it. People said to me, where'd you go to study your MC? I said, nah. Anyway, <laughs> just came out of it because I was nervous. So then one day the stage manager says to me, no, 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 Chris, we don't want none of that. We just want you to announce the toilets, no grog and the next act. Keep it simple. Kid you not. I, I was, I was shocked. So I kept it down. But two days later, the big boss from the Bacardi came up and said, no, 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 Chris, we want you to be that crazy Latino that you are. Say hello yeah. to all your fans. Go nuts like Kermit the Frog. And ever right. since then, I never looked back. But, yeah, uh, man. I remember it. I remember you and loving it. I remember when you used to bring on some veneno. You know, that was like a couple of years later. And, yeah. and, um, yeah, the and first- it was massive, man. It was so, it was, it was big. There was so many people there and, and just a great vibe. Well, I'm glad that the Latin scene has got you because what you've come into and the, way, the work that you've done now and spending that time on, on, on YouTube today, I felt like I was in, in, a, in a Danny G concert. I was jumping from your recent video, um, con, ¿cómo se llama? Con... Colageno. Colageno. Let's talk about that and then we'll come back to the Bacardi's years. But okay. fast forward now, I'm jumping around, I'm hanging out, preparing myself for this interview and you are the second. The second I said, nah, I cannot have you on the show and talk 10 minutes and find out about, it's going to go too quick and I'm going to be, I'm going to be ticked off that I didn't get to ask you about your life. So that's the real reason I'm here behind the scenes. And uh, so thank you for being part of the, the, original, the original YouTube hang. I want to ask you about this song. Okay, so I'm listening to this song. It's recorded in the studio. Uh, mm-hmm. You can check it out if you're listening. Jump. I'll put a link on this video uh, or if your YouTube channel and all your other links. Or on uh, Spotify. Spotify. Oh. I, I've got it on Spotify too. And by the way, we're creating a, uh, a show playlist. And we are creating a very own show playlist uh, under the Salsa Kings show. Uh, so people, all the songs that have been featured, all the artists, Carlos Velasquez, Danny G., Anyone who's anyone in this Sydney, I'm putting it there. So, and I got that inspired by you because you put up something two, three days ago. Oh, here's a playlist from, from up and coming artists in Latin America. And I started listening to it and I said, what a great idea. So Mm. this was what I mean. How many things have come together in such a short amount of time? Because to tell you the truth, I was bummed out when we got locked out, man, you know, ask my wife, my family, I, I went, I'm an up, I'm a very happy guy. I'm very positive. But when I started hearing Chris, this show's canceled, this show's canceled, this wedding's canceled, this does cancel, 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 postpone, 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 cancel, cancel, man. About four or five days into it, a week into it, I went down, man. Yeah. And out of the, out of the ashes, mate, the Phoenix comes out. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and I, and I volunteered to do a live show for a, for a church program that I'm part of and I'm just helping them out. And I didn't know how to live stream. And I said, I better study this. And lucky we had been preparing. We, the band had been preparing buying equipment, but we never got it right. Four months, five months of trying to go live. And eventually I got it right. And somewhere in the middle, I said, Oh yeah, I can do a live show. And that's how we got started. But anyway, back on you. It's not about us. It's about you. <laughs> this song I'm listening to today and I'm chilling and I'm going, man, this is good, man. Like, you know, my senses is when I get goosebumps like this, you know, when I get the goosebumps up, um, I love that feeling. And being a musician, being a dancer, first I was a dancer, then a musician. As a dancer, you relate to the beat, but as a musician, I relate to your composition, your chord changes, the way you structure it. And as a singer, I relate to your lyrics and that song is about positiveness. It's about what we're going through now, right? Um, yeah. Absolutely. It's about life's too short. I don't know if that was the same. You've got another one that's life's too short, but this one, yeah. the it's amazing. So look, let's start with that. Um, yeah. That's your latest production. It is. Yeah. It's one of the latest ones. Um, Colageno. It actually, it comes from, because in Colombia they say, they they refer to collagen or as as like um, 
you know, it means collagen. So they make, there's always a joke in Colombia about, oh, tienes mucho colágeno, <laughs> when, you're, when you're with a, a, someone young, like when you're yeah. with a young girl or, and they give you the, uh, the, the young feeling. Right. The, 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 yeah, don't worry, man, you're still young. Yeah. bigger, whatever it is. Yeah. And that's what, and that's what colágeno so is. For the people that's at home, for the people at home, you, you've been living in Colombia, you've been traveling to Colombia, you've been working in Colombia, and we'll get back to that story, but let's, let's finish this call like handle. So this, this song, how do you compose it? How do you write it? How do you get your lyrics out? Is it a collaboration? Um, tell me a little bit about how this song came about. Well, it's definitely collaboration. I mean, I come, I usually come up with the, the composition, like the basis, the music, uh, I'll put it down on my computer, you know, the groove, the intro, mm. the, the structure basically of the song mm. and, a, and, a, and an idea of what I want it to be about. Mm. Uh, and, then, and then I'll take it to someone else, uh, another music or a singer or someone that, that's good at lyrics because I'm no lyricist. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest with you, man. I'm no lyricist. But a wonderful, so I, a wonderful collaboration. I, yeah. Yeah, so I need all the help I can get with that stuff, with lyrics, lyrics especially. You know? uh, look, it's a beautiful song too. The lyrics are great. I really enjoyed the lyrics today. You know? so definitely yeah. hit the playlist. It's on the playlist now. So <laughs> check it out. If, you, if you've got the Salsa Kings playlist, it's right there. Cola Malo, malo. Cola Malo, malo, man. <laughs> It's on there. So, uh, uh, like the chord structure, I was impressed with that, that you've got a beautiful bridge, the way you chop into it right after the first verse. Ba, 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 yeah. ba. I don't know whether, da, da. yes, I went, yeah. Ooh, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it. <laughs> and man, I was able to just chill out this morning, listen to it properly from top to bottom, like, hmm. So, um, there's no other way to describe it. People need to slow down in this world. And I think, um, take a chance now, guys, if you're listening to, to this interview on the bottom, I'll have links to all, all these songs we're talking about um, on, on Spotify, but also the video clips, wonderful to, to, to watch. It's a, it's a very nice production you did in the studio. Um, fun, yeah, it was a fun, uh, low budget, but just, you know, just fun. No, no, no. Video Look, vibe. I think as long as you've got a good sound and a good camera, and obviously they had a really high resolution camera. You can tell it's a good camera. And even though it's filmed in a studio, you grab the essence of the song. It's a very creative shots. You know, there's one where the singer's kind of like, yeah. <laughs> and the slow camera panning movements. Credits to the to the video team. Un saludo a Colombia. They, they, are, they, they did great, man. They, Colombian video team, Nati Gurban, I think. Okay, yeah. well. Well, guys, check out that song. I'm really not going to dive too much there. I'm going to rewind back to the Bacardi days. So from Danny Gureka, sing all these Latin songs. Uh, take, us a, take us a quick journey from 1998, 97, which was Bacardi years, mm -hmm. and give us a tour of how Danny finds his way in Latin music. And not only that, because you're still doing some soulful music because on the same hour of Danny G this morning <laughs> in my office, I was listening to some of the stuff you were doing at the Monday Night Jams. And I saw you playing trumpet. Very, very cool. Um, on drums, you had um, Dominic. Dominic. Uh, another great cat that's come up. I mean, look at the quality yeah. of musicians in Sydney. Oh, uh, that was spot, man. We have great musicians here. And that's, yeah, that's uh, another thing that's really, that's really added so much to my musical journey is, is working with the great musicians here, here and, and in Colombia. And you've had that journey. Yeah. So that, that's it's and and before we get to this journey, you're gonna about to I also jumped on to another video where you're in Colombia at a live gig uh, about two, three years ago, and the song was talking about um, you only live once. I can't remember the name mm. of the song. Uh Aquarela. Yeah. Aquarela. Aquarela. I'm writing this down because I'm gonna bring it up on Saturday. Aquarela. What's that mean? It's like the watercolor colors of life basically mm. it, it starts as a love song it's a bit of a romantic salsa and it's the it's about love and and about how you need to 
to live life to the fullest, basically, because we only live once. Life's short. Enjoy it. Just Mate, enjoy it, you know? Honestly, <laughs> that, that, that song is so perfect for the times, you know? Uh, Danny, I love your smile, by the way. You've always had that contagious smile, you know? I remember being at the back of the clubs and we were both eyeing out the same girl. And you know, I'd see that now. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, okay. You know, and even though we never got to see each other that much, I knew you were there. I know you were playing over here. Um, you got to play with us a few times. And life's too quick. And that's why that song resonated with me because this is the only time I've slowed down and to say, really, am I doing what I really want? And I'm sure everybody's asking the same questions. What do I really want to do? Am I really impacting? How can I help more? How can I be less selfish? You know, even this show, like, I don't want it to be just about us, you know, and we would probably even rebrand the name of the show so it can become even more generic, you know, more open. It's, we only ran with, so, you know, just a small, um, uh, disclaimer the only reason we ran with that name is so we can stream to the fans that we already have built up around us and and hopefully That's through great, that man. we're introducing everybody else and you're going to be great on the show i can already see it the boys are excited to meet you and in our band we've got 16 musicians that are on rotation because you know being a covers band we're doing a lot of weddings and a lot of stuff like that and corporates and and it can get a bit repetitive rep repetition so we tell you the english <laughs> <laughs> repetitive it can become repetitive because you're playing the same songs all the time because that's what you need to play in a corporate environment in a wedding you need to play Cali Pachanguero which I love the song which but, I love too uh, well, I, I, I never get sick of that song I never get sick of it either but <laughs> listening to you today to these songs what really caught me yes the lyric caught me but what really caught me is your chord structure your progressions you, you, you've gone out of the normal um structure of salsa you've done things differently like put those chops right after a first verse that normally that wouldn't happen on a straight mm -hmm. salsa path and i feel like you have a little bit of cuban influence in you as well it's not just all Correct. colombian i feel that play so um i can't wait to study the music more so let's get back to the story let's get back to bacardi tell us a little bit of his journey how does danny Gudeka find himself in the latin scene in sydney which was already already a tough place to be back then mm. Very tough, very tough. You weren't getting, we weren't getting paid thousands of dollars to do a gig. You know? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you yeah, got... I heard about the, the five set gigs at La Campana. Yeah, because you was, got... I'm not... <laughs> <laughs> tell me, tell me more. The microphone's yours. <laughs> tell us a story. Tell them the price, son. Well, you know, because after going to the Bacardi Festival, I, um, I already knew Jose, Jose Marquez, Tonio. Oh, yeah. I was actually in a band with him back then because we met at music camp when we were about 12, 13 years old. And, and so I used to go to around to his house um, every week to practice yep. and he, him and his dad, they tried to show me salsa yep. or show me like some Cuban, like Los Bamban. And I was like, Oh yeah, cool. But I, I was really into rock music back then. Like four, four piece awesome. rock band, heavy, you know, Oh, we all are. <laughs> but then when, but then when i actually saw it live at the the bacardi festival i went back to them and i said guys i love this music you gotta fucking show you gotta show me the sorry it's only this, youtube mate <laughs> <laughs> you gotta show me the the rhythms awesome you know? and so they they taught me the the basics they they loved that I was into it, that I was interested. So they straight away they show, started showing me the basic basic rhythmic patterns and all that, and yeah. and that was I was fascinated by that as well, like the clave, how important the clave is. And mm. they told me about this book, the Salsa Guidebook by yeah. uh, Rebecca Malion, which awesome. I bought, and I loved that book. I, I studied it, and um, and would listen to. Cuban music, they, they made me mixtapes. I'd go and go home and listen to it and study it. Look at and that language back in the day of mixtapes. Yeah, yeah, that's right. On cassette too. <laughs> <laughs> On my Walkman. That's right. <laughs> yeah, and um and that was really my my introduction was just as a fan, really. Like I was a a Latin music fan more than anything. Um 
because I wasn't yet playing it properly. Although we did try to start a band, but I think it, it um, with Jose and Pepe, and we had a few practices back back in the day, and it was great. I loved it. I was on bass back then, actually. Wow, <laughs> multi skill. And um, but but it it never, yeah, it it never eventuated to it to much that that group that particular band. But then um, years later. I joined Club Havana band. Lorenzo gave me a call and said, Hey, I heard you like, you know, you're into Latin music. So come and play with us. And I was like, great. Awesome. Uh, um, oh yeah. I was really, um, really glad to be finally in a salsa band because I back at that time when he called me, when Lorenzo called me, I was playing in a lot of African bands. So, mm -hmm. which, which there's a lot of similarities between African great music. African music and, and Latin music. There's, Did you meet Junichi back then? Is Junichi in one of those African bands? Uh, yes, actually Junichi I met a little bit later, a little bit later, but he was definitely in the, in the scene back then as well. I was playing in Jive Kayana with Chris Gudu and, um, mm. and Malik Diop that those guys really, um, really taught me a lot about, about music and and then Lorenzo called me and I was like yes my dream has come true I'm yes. finally gonna be in a salsa band because I, I used to just look on in awe and be like oh I, I, I want to do that you know? good on you good on you man <laughs> and so I got I got my first chance to what really Benny, play salsa music. what Benny were you playing at with Lorenzo do you remember Beavers. 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 Ooh, Beavers. ah yes oh yeah <laughs> and so I learned quick. I learned quick because we were doing every weekend, every weekend, you know, every weekend plus other gigs. Um, there was a lot, a lot happening back then in the Latin. We had scene. so much. There was so many uh, top. There would have been top ten. If I can name quickly. We had uh, well BJ's La Campana. Uh, then you had the Spanish club. If you're lucky there, with the Cita Zorros, uh, and that's just in the quick vicinity. Vivas. Uh, the, the the brasserie. I don't know if you got around to see that one. Harvestside yeah. brasserie. Did you take up yeah. some salsa lessons while you were discovering music? Absolutely. Because yes, I think I, I saw you on the dance floor many a times, <laughs> just from the corner of my eye. And I was lucky. I was lucky to be part of a team that had been established for many years back then when Sonora Galaxia was playing. And yeah. I I drive that, but I remember seeing you in the crowd, and and we were all part of the same scene. But uh, yeah. I, I think it's very important for musicians to learn the basics of salsa dancing um, to understand Definitely. how music yeah. connects, to understand how the, 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 the dancer is, is feeling when we're playing the solos too long, for example. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I think that dancing is so important. And I would recommend all musicians, well, actually, just everyone. Yeah. And vice versa. Dance. I recommend yeah. dancers to learn a little bit about clave, a little bit about music, just dive into some videos and appreciate mm -hmm. one of the things I think sometimes dancers lack is appreciation of the live musician on stage, but that's another subject for another day. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, it looks like you went through Lorenzo. Where did you go from there? From there uh, to Veneno. Uh, <gasps> Cesar called me for a, a contract in Asia. Oh, Macau. you went to Macau. So, I remember. Yeah. I went to Macau with Veneno and, and that was also another dream come true because I always wanted to play with Veneno. I, uh, they were my favorite Latin band in Sydney. And, and I was like, yeah, I, I was Ven so excited to. Veneno to always that. put the bar high, really high. Mm -hmm. And that was awesome to see. And, and how awesome to see that, you know, a lot of people don't know, like people watching this video, they don't know how much talent there is in Sydney, Australia, Melbourne, Brisbane. Um, uh, we have about three minutes and 45 seconds left of this interview. Uh, quickly name the other bands you've played and then we'll move on. Well, I mean, briefly with, uh, with yourself, Salsa King, Sonora yeah. Gal Galaxia, yeah. um, with then I went to Colombia and I joined um, Orchestra. Oh, well, actually before that, I'm, I released my, a solo album, Danny G Felix project. Love it. And on that album, there's a couple of Latin tracks. And this is how I really, this is how I went 
to Columbia in the first place was because two of those tracks of, of the album, the, the two more Latino ones, um, got discovered in Colombia. Wow. And, and especially uh, this, this track called Tu Sabes, which I wrote with Dominic Kirk. And that you, they loved that, yeah, they loved that song, that that song Tu Sabes. And um, so I had people writing from to me over over the internet from Cali, Colombia, saying, "Hey, um, you know, ha, uh, we love this song. Um, you know, when are you coming to Colombia?" Basically, so that's the. I was wondering how Colombia was linked up to you. Wonderful, yeah. I love that. that I love that you went on your own path. You, you decided to make your own uh, album. That's fantastic. It's un- not very common for a pianist, instrumentalist. It's usually the other way around. The band pushes the other way or the singer. Mm. So well done to you, Danny, for doing that. Uh, it's available it on Spotify too, is it? It is. Danny G. Felix Project. Yeah, Looks like that my album. playlist is going to keep growing, man. <laughs> awesome, man. Awesome. And so from there, so from, so from there I am... Um, I went to Colombia and and was able to do a couple of shows under my name, uh, just off that track. And the band that that backed me at that time was Orquesta Calibre, which at the time were were not um, not famous. But then a couple of years, I saw the video. Of, yeah. Yes, and and then um, we they invited me to join the band because I fell in love with Colombia. When I went there, mm. I, I, first time I went there. I, what I just, year was that? How far back? That was 2013. And I went there for two or three weeks and I fell in love with the place. And I said, man, I want to come back here and, and, and spend some proper time here. And, and Freuber, Freuber Maya, the director of the Orquesta Calibre said, you know, come, come and join the, come and join us. And, and when I went back, they were already on, on the rise because they had a a big song out that was all over the radio in Cali. Mm. And so I, I I was lucky enough to join that band right when there was heaps of work and, and we'd go and tour in on these really remote places in Colombia and just, it was amazing, you know, places that you would never go to. As you and, do, uh, Danny, I'm going to take, I'm going to stop. I'm going to pause you right there. Calibre is the name of the band. The, the hits, it's amazing. Uh, do you remember the name of the song? Yeah, it's Es Valido was the, was the hit when I first joined the band. And then when, after I joined the band, we, we wrote a song. Um, right. And we're back. This is part two of the uh, Late Night Chats with Danny G. Felix, um, we're par- we're talking about the uh, Orquesta Calibre. Is Valio was the name of the song? That was the hit. Charupi, which I, I was, uh, which I recorded with them, and and that became a massive hit. Actually, what and, year was uh, this? Sorry, Danny, what year? That was 2014 or 15, 2015, actually, when we when we recorded Charupi. And you knew nobody in Colombia apart from this guy that just called you. Yeah, that they were. I mean, I first went there with Sam, with my with my friend Sam Z, yeah. and then um, through that song "Tu Sabes," I had some connections, like some some music collectors and DJs. And you weren't scared they, of traveling. Um, a little bit, you know. Actually, Colombia was the country that I. I told myself when I was about 10 years old and I saw that uh, the, the soccer star had been, had been <laughs> murdered because he scored an own goal yeah, at the right. World Cup, right? That's right. And, and I, I, I was so freaked out by that. And, and I said, man, I'm never, gonna, I'm never going to that country. <laughs> that wow. was the one country I was like, I'm never going to. Never say never. I mean, really That's intrigued. So it's 2014. <laughs> I can't remember if Narcos had been already out. I don't think so, but yeah, uh, okay. it was still, even without Narcos and even without that, I had heard of Colombia's Trouble as well. Obviously, we played a lot of the to our royal repertoire. I was really intrigued to see how you got there. So you, you only went with Sam. Uh, took a bit of guts, my friend, to, to pack up and go. 
<laughs> yeah, but but once I once I got there, I realized, nah, this place is is really actually really cool. You know, it's, Cali it, was it? tiene tiene mala fama, pero mucho sabor. I love mucho Colombia, sabor. man. I tengo muchos amigos en Colombia. I love Colombia. I think I should have been born Colombian, man, because you know sometimes me pego. ¿Qué hubo que más, pues? ¿Qué hubo que no, oh, that, look, I'm really, really interested in this in this story of yours. So, 2014, you joined this band, and how long did you stay there? How, how long was your first day? Uh, a year. I was there <clears throat> when I went back. I went back for a year. I stayed there, lived there, just playing with Calibre and a few other proyectos. And that that's also when when actually had I already started Malo Malo, I might have. No, I think it was. It was around that time that I started Malo Malo as well because I, I had the first, no, that was part of the first trip that I made to Colombia and I saw this band in Medellin that blew me away as well. It was just in a small club and and they played all repertoire of Hector Lavoe and Willy Colon from yeah. the Fania period. Fania hmm. Just 100% repertoire from that. Just seeing it live, just two trombones. Mm, el trombone. And yeah, dos trombones, um, you know, small band, like, I mean, for salsa standards, eight piece. Yeah. And, and, and it sounded so good. And I said, man, um, that's it. I'm starting a band like that. And that's, and, and that's when I started Malo Malo. Man, I, I can't believe your variety of music. Like from the days that you were playing at, um, uh, like the stuff that you were playing at the, la, the, la, the Monday jams, Mm -hmm. very soulful jazz kind of like hip fusion it's a bunch of stuff and then you jump on trumpet then someone else goes nuts on the bass um um great cats in sydney and i'm like that was around about the time that i couldn't get out of the house <laughs> i wanted to see stuff um but i'm so glad that you've got those videos up on youtube um because i was able to sit down this morning and go back like in a time machine um so whatever videos you've got up there man i think keep putting them up because it's yeah. beautiful beautiful so you start this band malo malo inspired by a band in medellin mm -hmm. and um you and, start and that was yeah and while i was playing with calibre as well so so i was sort of back and forth between sydney and cali yeah <clears throat> so when i was in sydney i'd had i already had formed malo malo which yeah. And and then I'd go back to uh, Cali and play with Calibre, and and then yeah, and so ever since then I've sort of been back and forth and and still do that when I when I go to Cali I've now got a formation of Malo Malo in, in Cali. Cali as well. I've got friends and in Cali, man. Uh, uh, it's one of the things, you know, that I applaud you that I did not get to do in my younger years. To go to Cali after knowing this music so much, uh, we have a, a a Colombian that we work with, Wilson Orozco, who jumps in the band in and out when we need him. Uh, oh, amazing singer, yeah. Yeah, and he tells me um, also uh, who was Alex Alex Herran, who's on trombone, and he always tells me, Chris, man, if you go to Cali, you're not gonna want to come back. You're not gonna you're gonna just you know uh, oh so te 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 tengo. Con cariño, envidia, you know, a very, 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 I'm very envious in a very loving way. Uh, and I applaud you for doing that. What guts it took to do it, but it's changed you as a person. Had you not gone to Colombia, could you imagine what you'd be like now? <laughs> yeah, it would be a different story for sure. I'd be a lot more boring, I think. No, 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 no. <laughs> But look, I think you bring, do you have jazz background? What's your, how, how would you describe yourself? Because yeah. I was reading an article. Yeah, I mean, I can't really pick. I don't think any artist can be really, you know, pigeonholed. I don't want to do that to anybody. You've got a lot of flair. Describe yourself as a musician. What's your style? Well, I definitely have a jazz background because um, from a young age, I loved jazz music. My mom introduced me to Miles Davis and I uh, fell in love. Mama. And that's when I, that's, yeah. And that's when I started the trumpet as well after hearing Miles Davis and, and James Morrison, actually, uh, Australian trumpet player. And I was, um, I wanted to do that. I was, I wanted to be a full-time jazz musician. I read the Miles Davis autobiography and I was hooked on the whole jazz 
thing, you know, the lifestyle and the, and, and the music, how much spirit and sort of um, the history, the history that also the, the improvisation, how sort of in the moment it is. And also the, 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 the African-American element. Um, I've always loved African-American music. And just the, the feeling of it, the, the sort of joyful, sad, it's, it's got an element of, of, of uh, oppression, this um, sadness, but, but with so much joy as well, you know, and, and I've always loved music like that. And so. Is that how you came across um, your other album, which was the English, the jazzy kind of album, um, self-titled, I think it was. Danny G Felix Project. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was uh, that was influenced by everything, a bit of everything, you know, um, jazz, uh, Latin, Cuban. Um, and you self fund this, America. right? You self funded yeah, it. Yeah, self funded, man. Man, so. my hat off to you, man. Like that's every penny of a musician's income. That's already on a on a, on a shoestring budget. Yeah. And, and, but the sound, the quality, I've listened to. I'm just going to jump around a little bit. And uh, well, speaking of the basement, when you were doing the Latin night, the, the Monday night jams, there was one tune that the one I'm referring to where I saw you play trumpet calmado. I'm sitting here calmadito, having my morning coffee and I listened to you play trumpet and I was just, you got your eyes closed and it's a beautiful moment captured in time. And I got to sit in the audience this morning and it was the, um, the new, uh, new OG is live at the basement. Um, goes for seven minutes. Let's see if I can put it on camera. Yeah, the new OGs, yeah. yeah. That song, yeah, that song, Biden. the way you captured that trumpet in that moment, I was, I was hooked. And, and a little bit saddened that, you know, with everything that's gone on, losing the basement, losing that era, um, if you weren't there, you missed it. And I was one of them. I missed it. But thank God for your YouTube video because you can still capture it. I had it on a surround speaker and on a widescreen, which I've got here. Um, yeah, I, I never heard you play trumpet. I've never had the chance to hear you play trumpet. I've, I've seen pictures of you. You've got some great, you've got some great promotional shots. <laughs> <laughs> you thought it was, it's all, it's all a facade. It's, all, it's yeah, not yeah. real. Because <laughs> that's what I did. I played trumpet. I, I started playing trumpet for Sonora, uh, but only as a way to get in the band. I said, okay, I'll learn second trumpet. And, I, and back then it was easy because they were playing a lot of Sonora Dinamita music, which is also Colombian. So mm -hmm. I learned enough to get my foot in the door. And it was just cumbia back then. Cumbia back in the early, oh my gosh, I joined Galaxia in 1991. And I don't think you were around back then. <laughs> what year were you born? I was born in 84. So not, yeah, I was so You would have been six. You would have been six. And I was trying to learn. But at school, I played trombone. And I love the trombone. So a lot of people don't know that. But when I listen to your music, I relate to so much. Malo Malo I'm talking about. Um, fast forward to 2019 or 2000. Was it this year when you released that, that, that edition? Uh, you had Mike Rape on trombone. Um, the latest video you did with Malo Malo, it was live. You yeah. were playing a grand piano. Oh, yeah. The, at the Phoenix Central Park. That was a um, uh, live a live performance that we did at this, this massive space in Chippendale and yeah. uh, beautiful space, beautiful space. Yeah. The acoustics amazing at uh, Tom. Uh, I was playing that today too. Tombola, Tombola. Tombola. Yeah. Tombola. That was one of our, that was one of our first original, one of, one of our first originals with Malo Malo. Man. Uh, and to everybody listening out there, you've got to listen to these songs. You've got to support Danny G. I'm looking at that. It's only been out for a little while and and it needs to get listened to around the world. You know, that's, that was my frustration. I was thinking how, I mean, how do we get people to find you? You know, like there's gotta be a better way. I think that something's wrong. Something's missing in this culture that, that you, my friend should be up there with the greatest. I mean, look at these playlists I've been listening to. Like, where is it? Can you see? Look at that, that, uh, there it is. It's focusing. <laughs> Uh, yeah. um, this is just today bang and the reason my phone's got it's because oh uh, yeah um, oh Orquesta Calibre I was listening to Llegó La, La, La Hora yeah Llegó La Hora that was oh. another, another one that was como, a great one Como Me Pongo 
como me pongo. And I understand that in Colombia, the budget will be very tight as well for, for, for the average person to put a band together, video cameras. Man, yeah. c- congratulations to the Colombian team. So moving forward, Danny, where do you see yourself now? What do you, what's your projects for the future? What, what's Danny's heart telling you? What's your instinct telling you now? Because I think your, instinct is, your instincts and your courage has brought you to where you are now. And from my point of view, it's, it's, man, I should be making a movie of you one day. Let's make a movie of Danny. I wonder who's going to play you though. <laughs> going to be a talented chap. Because, you, know, you know, like, I don't know if you've seen the movie Whiplash, right? Yeah. Yeah, and, I have loved and, and to me, as a musician, I think that's the closest that, that can be, the average person can understand what it's like to be a musician. You know, mm. that you're on time. You're, you know, when the guy's getting slapped on the face. Um, you know, um, hang on a second. Yeah, it's a, it's a, great, it's a great movie, isn't it? A really, really um, good movie. But uh, what's your future? Tell me your future because I'm going to run out of time again. So. Well, man, um, Malo Malo, I'm, I'm really going all out with Malo Malo at the moment. I'm trying to, you know, I've been recording heaps, writing, writing lots of music for the band and recording awesome. here, here and in Colombia. And, Keep and talking, buddy. To- Keep talking. I'm yeah. listening to you. I'm just going to charge you that. <laughs> okay. Um, and I'm uh, trying to get my promotional skills up. I'm using this time, actually, this, this, uh, this time off gigging to yep. learn about a, a bit about the bi- music business, you know, and, and what we all are. Yeah. And how to better connect with audiences, um, how to, how to sort of bring people in into the music more you know especially non non latino audiences and how uh-huh. to bring them how to bring them into salsa music and um because i think it's it's such great music and and everyone should be able to to enjoy it and and have fun I, but I, I think we just need to figure out the way which you do you do this great with uh, with salsa kings and your show because you you know you don't just do salsa. Well, you... it's a, it's a, it's a, at a massive sacrifice, you know. When we're playing something that's not really, I mean, of course I love rock and pop and, and but it is a sacrifice. But if you can find a way, my friend, I'll be very interested. Um, and and I think it's going to take more than just one ingredient. It's going to be like yeah. a super duper massive cake that you come up with, and and you might need to collaborate with that formula. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing you grow and I, I really, really hate to cut you off. This is my first time I'm doing this t- interview. I hope to do more of them in the future. Danny, there's so much more of you. And, and, and that's why on Saturday, I can't wait to see you Saturday. If you're listening to this, Mi Gente Latina, Danny G will be live on the studio. That interview is only going to go for 10 minutes. It's going to go squeezy and fast, but it's going to have a different energy. It's going to have the, the live energy for the gringos, you know, yeah. and the gringos, we're going to keep I it have- in English. We're going to make you dance. We're going to make you play a trumpet and play very visual. <laughs> And that's one of the things I'm learning, you know, to answer your question. So I really want to take that, that subject. We're just going to leave it up to here. I think you're onto something. How do we cross over all of us, all the Latin genre? Yeah. How do we make that mainstream? How can someone like Hollywood who generally does not pick our music up, right? It, it doesn't. And, and I think it's really important what you're doing here with inviting other bands and, and supporting the scene, you know, the community, us really think, um, you know, making making something out of the Latin music community and something that everyone can, feels like they can be a part of, and and oh, you know, and, awesome words, man. And supporting each other, like Thanks. all the bands supporting each other, mate. I think we're onto something. And look, I'm going to cut you short only because I'm running out of time, battery power, and um, but look, you've said it all. I will see you on Saturday, Danny. It's going to be a great show, and this this topic will be to be to be continued. Let's see where it goes. Keep working hard. I'm here supporting you guys. And I think it's time that Sydney, Australia uh, supports all our artists. And I'm, I'm sure we're going to get this started. I'm really excited about the new, the new future. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks so much for having me, Chris. I'll see you on the sound check and I'll text you. Let me just pause this and say goodnight to our people. Bye.